Hello, P5 students! Welcome again to our science class with Miss Ida. We are now on Unit 3, Lesson D. What is seed dispersal? Let's get our science people's book and open it on pages 69 to 81 while watching this video. So what are you waiting for? Let's start learning! Our learning outcomes are the following. Recognize the various ways in which seeds can be dispersed. Recognize the process of pollination, fertilization, seed production, seed dispersal, and germination involved in the reproduction of flowering plants. To get started, look at the picture. If most of the seeds from the ripe fruit were to drop onto the ground below the tree, would they be able to grow well? What do you think, Let's try to find out. So study the pictures of the fruit on people's book pages 69 to 70. We have here mango fruit, coconut fruit, and dandelion fruit. Based on the characteristics of each fruit, are the seeds dispersed by wind, water, animals, or expulsion? Take your time to answer, children, and don't forget to write it in the Google Classroom. So first, we will discuss dispersal by wind. The fine hairs of a dandelion fruit form a parachute that helps it catch the wind and stay in the air for a long time. This enables the seed to move away from the parent plant. In other examples, the fruit of the cotton grass plant is fluffy. The fruit of the maple tree has wings. Seed dispersal by wind are usually small and light. The fruit containing the seeds may be fluffy or have wing-like or parachute-like structures. This helps the fruit carry the seeds far away in the wind. Next is dispersal by water. Look at the picture. A coconut fruit is heavy. Can it float in water? Yes, it does. A coconut fruit is a fibrous husk that traps air. This enables the coconut fruit to float in water and be carried to distant shores. The seed is thus dispersed from the parent plant. Another example of dispersal by water. Fruit or seeds dispersed by water are usually able to float. The seeds of the lotus plant can drop into water and float away. And the fruit of the nipa palm tree can float in water too. Now let's go to dispersal by animals. Do you like sweet and juicy fruits such as cherries, mangoes, grapes, and papayas? The fruit of the cherry tree is sweet and juicy, and the fruit of the papaya plant is sweet and juicy as well. Some animals like them too. After eating the fruit, animals help disperse the seeds far away from the parent plant by throwing the seeds away or passing them out in their droppings. Yeah, here the bird is feeding on a cherry fruit and the monkey is feeding on papaya fruit. Now, in try this section, children, have you heard of coffee rhubarb? It is one of the world's most expensive coffee beans. Coffee beans are the seeds of coffee plants. A small mama called the Asian popsipet, rhubarb in Indonesian, is the ripest coffee cherries or coffee fruit. It then passes out the partly digested fruit together with the seeds in its droppings. Thus, the Asian coffee bed helps disperse coffee seeds. The coffee beans that are passed out from the Asian sea beds are said to have a special flavor when brewed into coffee. People collect these beans and wash, dry, and roast them. Some coffee drinkers are willing to pay a high price for them, so you should be happy children because it comes from Indonesia. And let's go to dispersal by animals. Have you walked through a field and got grass fruit or seeds stuck to your socks? Look at the picture. Did you know you were helping to disperse grass seeds? Yes, you already do. Some kinds of fruit dispersed by animals are not sweet and juicy. Instead, they have hooks or stiff hairs that cling onto the fur of passing animals or clothes of humans. The animals help disperse the seeds as they move around. Look at the pictures here. The fruit of the cacobier plant has hooks, while the fruit of the mimosa plant has stiff hairs. In 
going further, do your shoes have hook and loop fasteners? The hook and loop fastener was invented by a Swiss engineer named George Pinestro. One day in 1941, Pinestro went for a hike. When he reached home after the hike, his clothes were covered with ears. The ears are the fruit of a kind of weed. He observed that each ear had small hooks. These hooks clung onto the loops in the fabric of his clothes. Are you familiar with this, children? Inspired, the menstrual design a fastener with tiny hooks on one side and loops on the other side. After several years of experimenting, he succeeded. Today, his invention is widely used. The story of Dimestro's invention shows that we can learn a lot from nature. Next, we have the dispersal by explosion. The fruit of this flame of the forest is neither small nor light. It is ineatable. It has no wing-like or parachute-like structures, fibrous husk, hooks, or stiff hairs. It won't weigh to the seeds of the flame of the forest get dispersed. The fruit of the flame of the forest dries up and explodes when ripe to disperse the seeds. Some kinds of fruit dry up and explode when ripe, dispersing the seeds far and wide. Look at the picture. It is the seeds of the saga tree which is dispersed by explosion of the fruit. Another two examples of dispersal by expulsion. The seeds of the rubber tree are dispersed by expulsion of the fruit and the seeds of the balsam plant are dispersed by expulsion of the fruit also. So for lesson B children, we have learned that the seeds of plants are dispersed to prevent overcrowding. Besides protecting the seeds, fruit also helps seed disperse. Seeds can be dispersed by wind water, animals, or explosion. Seeds dispersed by different methods have different characteristics. And that ends our lesson for today, children. Thanks for watching. Be ready and be on time for our Zoom meeting. Ms. Ida will discuss more about seed dispersal. So take care, B5 student, and see you in our next video. Bye-bye and God bless everyone.